Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Dr. Abdelkadi Islamiyat Oluwato in Dr. Mia. Today I'll be talking about one of the commonest cancers that occur in female. Yeah, you're thinking it's breast cancer. No, I'm talking about the commonest gynecological cancers in female, and that is called cervical cancer. Uh, remember to like this video, to share this video, and drop your comments on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, so that other people would have access to this information. Thank you. Why am I talking about cervical cancer? Let, let's look back in the years, back in the years. We have rare cases of this cancer, but lately, this cancer is so rampant and it's so common amongst females. For instance, during the World Cancer Day, that was in uh, February 4th, 2017, Nigeria had a case of had cases of about more than 14,000 cases of cervical cancer. That is so drastic. In a country where we barely had 100 cases of cervical cancer, but now we have more than 14 cases. That is the those are the cases that um they are presented at the hospital. Other cases that you never knew. You never knew about that, never recorded by the health system. So it's much more than even 14,000. So that is why we need to, to watch this video and listen attentively. So like even if you're a male, you can tell your sister, you can tell your wife, you can tell your mother about this information because it is so common. Unlike breast cancer, you can see, oh, this my breast is having cancer or so. But cervical cancer occurs internally. So you, you might not even know until it gets to the end stage of this cancer now uh, what is cervical cancer cervical cancer is the cancer that occurs at the lower part of the uterus okay you know we have the uterus which is also known as the womb the womb of a woman or a lady the lower part of this womb is called cervix so when this cancer occurs at the lower part of the cervix then we have what is called cervical cancer now what are the causes of cervical cancer? Cervical cancer is caused by a virus called human papilloma virus. Majorly, human papilloma virus types 16 and 18. These are the viruses that cause cervical cancer. Other types of human papilloma virus are type 1, type 2, type 4, and which causes other diseases, maybe like genital wart or so. Now, um, that means for every cervical cancer, you need to have human papilloma virus. Now, why do we have human papilloma virus or how can you have human papilloma virus? What are the risk factors of cervical cancer? The first and major risk factor is having sexual intercourse at an early age, that is early onset of sexual activity. If you are a lady and you started having sexual intercourse at the age of 13, 16, even early 20s, you are at risk of having cervical cancer. And this is because when you start having sexual intercourse at early age, you're prone to having multiple sexual partners. So another risk factor is having multiple sexual partners. And also, if your sexual partner, maybe your husband or your fiancé or whatever, is having multiple sexual partners, then you are at risk of having cervical cancer, which means early stage of having sexual intercourse, multiple sexual partners, of all having a partner who has multiple sexual partners. Another risk factors are smoking. If you're smoking cigarettes, shisha, or weed, or anything, smoking is smoking, you're at risk of having cervical cancer. Another one is oral contraceptive. Then again, you're at risk of having cervical cancer. Note, People use oral contraceptive for family planning. So it does not mean everyone or anyone that uses oral contraceptive would have cervical cancer. No, that is why it's called risk factor. But the major two risk factors are early onset of sexual activity and having multiple sexual partner. So if you're a lady that, has, uh, that started having sex at the age of 16, and then you've dated and dated a lot of guys and you're having multiple sexual partners and you still smoke shisha due to some reason you can't get pregnant then use oral contraceptive then you're at risk of having cervical cancer my sister you are at risk of having cervical cancer now um after knowing the risk factors of cervical cancer what are the presentation what do you say when you have cervical cancer how do you feel 
the first symptom is when you have irregular bleeding that is irregular bleeding before your menstrual period or after your menstrual period or during your menstrual period you have every bleeding every bleeding and even pain during your menstrual period then you might be suspecting a cervical cancer note not all every bleeding during menstrual period means you have cervical cancer no these are just the symptoms of cervical cancer another symptom is pain during sexual intercourse or bleeding during sexual intercourse and also excessive vaginal discharge all these are the symptoms you have when you have cervical cancer or when you're suspecting cervical cancer remember you might not have all those symptoms and yet that doesn't mean you are not at risk of having cervical cancer or it doesn't mean you are, you don't have cervical cancer the fact is if you start having sex at an early age and you have multiple sexual partner then you are at risk of having cervical cancer and you need to take precautions now what are the precautions why what are the things you need to do so that you can detect if you are at risk of having cervical cancer or if you have cervical cancer that is why um it is being known that if you're sexually active you need to do pap smear pap smear is a test that you get to do in the hospital where um you they, they know or they can discover through whenever they get a sample from your vagina or wherever they can know if you're at risk of having cervical cancer it's called pap smear you can go to the hospital ask your doctor details about pap smear and that is why it is recommended at the age of 21 you should start doing pap smear as a regular routine or regular routine checkup and it is repeated every five years if the test is negative but if the test is positive then you would need to do a cervical biopsy to know if you have the precancerial um, pre cells which is known as cervical intraepithelial neoplasia cells do you get me the first thing you do is the pap smear which is regular routine that you do every five years if you are above the age of 21 and if it is positive then you're likely to do cervical biopsy other tests will be done or will be will be told to you by your doctors and another thing is um vaccine if you're yet to get uh to be sexually active like that is if you've never had sexual intercourse there is this vaccine that works against human papilloma virus you can have it even we give it in the united states it's been given to girls at the age of nine so you can give your girls or your children this vaccine before they become sexually active because it works only before you're sexually active another prevention is abstinence that is it the major thing if you can abstain then it's better not to not to have it and then you should strictly have one sexual partner yes maybe just have one sexual partner and another prevention is the use of condom yes condom or um barrier method of um family planning this prevents you from other stds or other infection and it's it's not as if it prevents you 100 percent no but at least it still prevents you from having uh, cervical cancer those are the ways where you can prevent cervical cancer now what do you do if you happen to do your pap smear and it's positive then the next thing you will do is cervical biopsy if you do the cervical biopsy and it's and it is positive then you need to consult a doctor who would manage you for cervical cancer treatment there are various treatment strategy to cervical cancer but the the part of it is um the common one is the radical hysterectomy that is they remove the uterus or they remove the cancer but before you get to that stage that is why you need this pap smear you need this routine to do it before you get to the stage of removing your whole womb ah, that's why you need to go to the hospital and make sure that you do this routine regularly so that even before it spreads to other parts of the uterus they've arrested this disease do you understand me that's the brief information about cervical cancer and like i said the reason why i've chosen this topic is because it's common lately amongst we ladies and we don't most of us don't even know we don't even know that uh, we have cervical cancer until the late late stage now my advice is my final advice if you're sexually active and you're above the age of 20 even we don't, don't care about the age if you're sexually active 
just go to the hospital and do your pap smear if it is negative thank god and then you do it routinely every five five years and most importantly have one sexual partner and if if you can abstain then it's good it's better thank you so much and to the guys out there please and please and please just have one sexual partner because the girl would have one sexual partner but the guy is cheating on her one way or the other having multiple sexual partners please just make sure you have one sexual partner and you prevent your girlfriends your fiancés your wife and everyone from having this cancer thank you so much and i hope you benefited from this video uh, like i said comment and then you can ask questions you can inbox me on facebook on instagram thank you so much once again my name is dr abdikazi islamiyat uluwato in dr mia have a wonderful sunday bye bye